long-term care insurance policies are somewhat complicated and there's a lot of forbidding vocabulary and jargon. I have been trying to demystify that a little bit and we'll continue that today with a conversation about elimination periods. In general, an elimination period is any period in between a request for an action and when that action is carried out. In the long-term care insurance industry, the elimination period specifically is the time period between when you've been certified chronically ill and when your benefits actually start to pay out. In other words, it's a waiting period that occurs during which no money will be paid to you and during which you will be responsible for paying for your own care. It strikes some people as a little bit odd that you might need the long-term care policy and have to wait for it to pay out. But this waiting period, also known as a qualifying period, it is sometimes referred to as a time deductible, but specifically, it's the period between benefit eligibility and benefit payout. Now, the elimination period usually ranges between one and six months, and it's typically specified as a certain number of days. Theoretically, the number of days could be any number. It could be 365. It could be zero. But the usual figures are going to be something like 30 days, 90 days, 180 days, something in that vicinity. You select the elimination period from among options that are presented to you by the insurance company at the time you apply for the coverage. And here it's important to remember that an insurance policy application is typically a three-step process. So the first step, the ball is in your court. You actually apply for the coverage, you kind of sketch the options that you want, and then in the second phase, the ball moves to the insurance company's court. And here they're going to evaluate you, they're going to ask you questions, they're going to underwrite you, in other words. And if they find that you're insurable, they will make you an offer. At that point, the third step, the ball goes back in your court, you can either accept the offer or not, and if you do accept the offer, then the policy goes in force. So in some cases, you have the opportunity to change certain options, amend the application at the time that that contract is offered to you before it's put into force. Because once it's in force, that contract provision probably can't be changed with respect to the elimination period. So let's think about an example. So suppose Jane has a long-term care insurance policy. Let's say she's had it in place for a long time. Her elimination period is set at 180 days, and she's certified chronically ill on January the 1st. The question is, how much time is she going to have to wait before she can expect to receive benefits from her policy? And the answer is the elimination period. So if her elimination period is six months, then Jane will not receive her first paycheck until around July the 1st. Technically, 180 days will be around June the 28th, but you get the picture. If, on the other hand, her elimination period is 90 days or three months, then she's going to expect to be paid benefits around the end of March or the beginning of April. If her period is set to 30 days, she might be able to receive her benefits as soon as February the 1st or the end of January, right after she's certified chronically ill. Now, we see a few things from this example. First and most importantly, during the elimination period, your long-term care policy will not pay you any benefits. And I keep saying this because it is a surprise to some people that they might qualify for benefits or be eligible for benefits and yet not get any benefits from their policy yet. And that's the nature of a deductible. In this case, unlike a health insurance plan where you might have to spend a certain amount of money up to a certain limit in order to get your benefits paid out to you under a health insurance policy, for long-term care, the deductible is time. Now, time is money, so there is a cost associated with that time. So if you have to wait six months and you have to be in a nursing home, well, let's suppose that a nursing home costs $100,000 in a year, then a six-month waiting period might cost you $50,000 out of pocket if you had to go directly into a nursing home. On the other hand, 30-day elimination period might cost you $8,300 on the same figure if you had to go into a nursing home directly. The second thing to notice from the example is that the elimination period doesn't begin until you are certified chronically ill. So in the example, the elimination period started as soon as Jane was certified chronically ill. And I have other conversations about this, but in general, we will recall that being certified chronically ill, at least according to a qualified long-term care policy, is gonna involve the expectation that whatever you're suffering from will last no fewer than 90 days, and in specific, you're going to lack either two out of six activities of daily living, on which I have other material, or you're going to have a cognitive impairment that is so severe that you're going to require substantial supervision in order to keep yourself safe and to keep other people safe around you. Do you have to satisfy an elimination period more than one time? Now, generally, the answer to this is no, but you should be aware that some older policies, some non-qualified policies, and many short-term care insurance policies 
will be calibrated to various episodes of care, and sometimes there is a separate elimination period for each of these episodes of care. But most currently available long-term care insurance policies, and in specific those policies that are qualified, that is tax qualified, and I have a specific video just on that question and distinction, those policies are going to have a one-time lifetime elimination period. That means that once you have served the elimination period, you never have to serve it again. And when you think of it, this really makes sense for the kinds of conditions that are in view in this case. We're talking about chronic illnesses, and of course the focus of this channel is Alzheimer's disease, so Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, other kinds of neurological dysfunction. These conditions, once you have them, you're not going to improve. So obviously the expectation is you're going to have Alzheimer's disease once it's been identified for more than 90 days. Now I will interject here that most currently issued policies do cover Alzheimer's disease and other kinds of brain dysfunction and cognitive impairment. And this might include other kinds of organic diseases, neurological problems, and so on. However, to be sure that your condition is not excluded, you have to consult the contractual language very carefully. So any exclusions would be specified in the contract. So if there is a condition that's not covered, it would be in your long-term care agreement. So number one, if you're going to buy one, make sure that the condition you're concerned about is not in it. And number two, if you have one already, you would want to take a careful look at it to see what conditions, if any, are excluded. I'm presupposing that a person is buying a contract or has a contract in place before any condition surfaces. Of course, having mild cognitive impairment, having a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, these things are going to kill your insurability, especially from the standpoint of long-term care, and I have a separate video on that. You should also be aware that there are certain age cutoffs from various insurers, and generally this is going to be between the age of 70 and 80, you usually can't get long-term care somewhere in that range. But the elimination period directly determines when the benefits are going to be paid to you. The other thing to know is that the time period that you select for the elimination period is going to have a direct impact on your premium costs. All other things being equal, the shorter the elimination period, the briefer it is, the higher your premium payment is going to be. And the longer the elimination period that you select, the lower the premium is going to tend to be. Again, all other things being equal. There may be other things that impact the premium of your insurance policy. The total payout is going to be one. How insurable you are is going to be another. But when it comes to the elimination period, that period length has an inverse relationship to the premium cost. So for any given insured person, a policy with a 90-day elimination period is going to cost more than a policy with a 180-day elimination period. And extending that further, if you compress that elimination period even more, 60-day policies are going to be more expensive, 30-day policies are going to be even more expensive, and if you can find a policy with a zero-day elimination period, that is going to be the most expensive of all, again, all other things being equal. And this is because it's more and more likely you're going to use the policy the shorter the elimination period is, because unfortunately some people who need long-term care might die in just a couple of months after they're diagnosed or after they enter into a nursing home. So if you have a six-month elimination period and you enter into a nursing home on January the 1st and you die in four months, you're never even going to get a benefit check from your policy, not because you didn't need it, but because you died midway in the elimination period. One other complication, and that is sometimes policies have more than one elimination period, and sometimes these are calibrated to different care environments. So it's not uncommon, let's say, to have two elimination periods. One that's calibrated to a nursing home, so maybe that's 180 days, and then a second one that's calibrated, let's say, to home care. Your policy might have two different benefit levels. One level might give you a higher benefit for nursing home care, and for that you might have to wait 180 days. But maybe your policy also has a zero-day elimination period for home care, or 30 days, or something that is a little bit less difficult to serve. In summary, the long-term care elimination period is a length of time, usually specified in days, between when you qualify for benefits and when you actually receive that first check. But this raises some obvious questions. If there's a period of time where you have to wait for benefits, but when you need benefits, how can you pay for your care? Now, there are several strategies for this, but careful planning and strategizing is certainly called for, especially since, as I've talked about in other videos, health insurance and Medicare do not cover long-term care costs, for the most part. And I have a separate video just covering Medicare, and I may get into health insurance in another installment as well. 
So most people in this case have to turn to private savings number one or to family and friends number two, that is to say in a lower cost care environment. So maybe you can't go into a nursing home right away. Maybe you have to be cared for by a spouse or a son or daughter in your home or in their home, maybe for a few months before your policy will pay out. Now you have to carefully look at this as well because in some cases a policy might require that you enter into a nursing home before your elimination period is counted as served. And this adds one additional wrinkle, and that's the difference between a calendar day elimination period and a service day elimination period. But let me go over that distinction in a separate video because I think I've already overloaded people with a lot of information in this one. And in future videos, I may get into how you can focus on paying for your care, especially during the elimination period. But if you found something of use in this video, I ask that you like it. I ask that you subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be alerted to new content as it becomes available. I thank you so much for being with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Thank you so much.